you to David Heath and the artist Ivan Caceres. Thank you very much. I, I just love it. I just love it. And if my grandfather was around, he'd have a gas. Thank you again. All right, and here we are with GMT's weekly, or monthly, I should say, monthly update for May 2020. So Gene says they will be open starting May 25th. So the websites are going to be open for ordering, the chat lines are going to be open, and the, he says the office folks will start working back through their emails, but be patient, he says. They've got 10 weeks of emails that they have to look forwards to, if you can say that. So, okay, man, let's see here. What's new with GMT and their shipping? Because that's what I'm going to be saying here. Well, what's new on the P500 is, and I hope I say this right, is Border Reavers. So this is a game by Ed Beach and Anglo-Scottish Border Raids from 1513 to 1603. And what you get with this game is... A 22 by 34 inch mounted map, 126 main deck cards, 60 mini deck cards, 90 wooden cubes, 54 wooden meeples, meeples, sheep meeples, sounds like Catan, 48 wooden horse meeples, it's Catan, two counter sheets, rule book, book of historical notes, 12 cardstock player sheets and charts, and 20 six sided dice. Complexity is medium low and solitaire suitability is medium low. So Gene also says, the new P500 on the horizon, so what's to come? And he has a new deep strategy game with an ancient theme. I wonder who's gonna design that. A new design by Sal Vasta, love Sal. A new game set in Afghanistan and a new edition of their sold out monster World War II game. And I'm wondering how many more monsters are gonna be designed like in the future? I guess, well, I'm assuming less and less, because time is of the essence, but hey, some people really enjoy monsters. So the most requested P500 games by order received through May 17th were and are Imperial Struggle, 3,927 votes, Mr. President with 2,100 votes, Labyrinth, The Forever War with 1,800 votes, The Russian Campaign, 1,500 uh, votes, orders, Votes. I've got this vote in my head. Follow Saigon, the expansion of Fire in the Lake, that's 1500. Mark Herman's Pacific War, the struggle against Japan, 41 to 45, with 1500 orders. Versailles, with 1400 orders. All Bridges Burning, with 1300 orders. Space Corps Ventures, 1100 orders. And Samurai Battles, a command in colors, 1100 orders. And the Tuong Bot update pack from Fire in the Lake, I hope I said that right, with 1,100 orders, and China's War with 1,100 orders. Charging and shipping, the first 500 P500 batch, and they plan to ship this May 27th. It will be Imperial Struggle, Labyrinth Forever War Expansions, Men of Iron Tri-Pack, and Wind Leader Origins 1936 to 1942. The second batch, from June 15th to the 25th will be Beneath the Med, Space Empire's 4X, 4th printing, Space Empire's 3-inch box, and the Battle of Rhode Island. The third batch, July 15th to 25th. This is when they anticipate shipping that. 1989, second printing, Flying Colors, third printing, and the update kick for Flying Colors, Storm Over Asia. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the GMT Monthly Update. And in other news around the world, Armchair General, yeah, I checked it out. And you know what? They're reviewing Pemberton and Grant from Worthington Publishing. I mean, and there's a sale price. This is a game designed by Sean Chick. And uh, there's a sale price on this. And usually I don't discuss money on this, on this show because eh, I want you to check it out. But... It's 35 bucks. 35 bucks. Awesome.
Games Games in Russia Besieged Deluxe Edition Player's Guide. That's right, a 64-page magazine describing the history of the game. And what you get with this player's guide is a 64-page booklet, two half sheets of counters, and two historical variant displays, double-sided. Obviously, you must own a copy of Russia Besieged. Conflict Simulations and Sedan 1940. This is an expansion to we were not cowards, so this is a pre-order. Obviously, it's on the pre-order section of the show. And Sedan 1940 is a battalion and lower level tactical game focused on the decisive actions at Sedan led by Rommel in 1940. From Legion War Games, Patrick Mullins campaigned in Vietnam, a hot dry season operation Attleboro in Warzone C. And what you get with this game is a 22 by 34 inch map, 840 counters, a rule book, a playbook, player aids, map scale is one mile per hex, unit size is company, and the time scale is one day per turn. This is a two player game, complexity is medium high, solitaire suitability is medium. Jan Heinemann of Let's Play History must be sleeping because as of Thursday, he only has 13 videos out. Most of it is playing Fields of Glory 2, but a lot of stuff is written in, in German, but I, I see one here and it's a little, it's a little perplexing. It's König der König with an E. Könige. Well, I don't know. He also plays Strategic Command World War I, Stalestand an der Westfront. And, as I said, it's Fields of Glory 2. And the great Stuka Joe is back with a unboxing of Dawn of Empire, the Spanish-American Atlantic Naval War, 1898, a game designed by Steven Newberg, published by Compass Games. Marty of Ardwolf's Lair takes a look at an unboxing, actually he's doing an unboxing from Legion of Honor. How did, this is this is some sort of RPG type card game, being a, a Napoleonic grognard and going through grognard life in the grognard times. And Legion of Honor is published by Clash of Arm Games, and also he plays the great campaigns of the American Civil War, the Battle Above the Clouds, the Battle of Chickamauga. Gimpy of the Gimpy Gamer does part three of the campaign in Conflict of Heroes, Storms of Steel. Actually, I should say campaign three, part eight. And also, again, from Academy Games, Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. He prototypes the new solitaire system, which was discussed on War and Pieces with Uva Eichert, and I'm just blown away by it. Check it out. A game for gamers, made by gamers, by Flying Pig Games. The gentlemen from Illuminating Rounds and Everything ASL are talking about Galician Gateway and Urban Gorillas. And Cody of the Discriminating Gamer takes a look at Undaunted North Africa. Yes, boys and girls, North Africa game designed by Trevor Benjamin and David Thompson. And um, you gotta hear this. Hello and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that would like to tell an amusing story from World War II. Apparently at one point in the war, an American general visited the front line and he found a private. He said to him, son, did you come here to die? And this private responded to the general, now nah, sir, I came here yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, today Tim of Hairbrain Games takes a look at, or reviews, Crusaders, Thy Will Be Done. He takes a look at a game involving the Templar Knights, Europe, and a general direction of East, wherein said groups, within the group, via for dominance and prestige. Not via, vi. I read it wrong. Before I so unbiasedly do my job, here's a shot.
those bastards? Yeah, I, I, I know who the brains is behind this. Thanks, Mr. Rumfeld. Mr. Kleinheinz, as we know him as Little Ketchup. Look at that smile. That smile. This is an all-out offense on my people. Look at this mohair, leopard print, bear-looking shirt. Now, if that doesn't kill me, nothing will. Marco Omnigamer, a.k.a. Marco Wargamer. We're on DEFCON 3. Aid, Alexander reviews Crowbar from Flying Pig Games, designed by Dream Team designer Herman Lottman, and also unboxes Okinawa from Tiny Battle Publishing. And because I'm at war with the player's aid, he butchers the designer's name. Oh, Alexander, try, huh? And that's the guy you want to go with. It's Erigo Velikonga. Come on! And does a playthrough of Revolution Games Corrigidor or Corrigidor 1945? Look, G is soft in most Italian words, so I just I made a mistake. The Terry Board Gamer continues the BCS series Baptism by Fire campaign. He's in the 23rd February 1943. This is a game designed by Dean Essig, published by MMP. And A.J. Toynbee of Hexes and Soldiers takes a look at Battles of Napoleon, The Eagle and the Line, a game published in 2010, designed by Ugo Di Meglio and Sergio Guerri, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Also, A.J. has a video called Strange Brew, which is a cream tune, but this is a free association of tactical rules, mostly Advanced Squad Leader applied to a custom 3D terrain setup. And he says here after 20 minutes, he finds a groove. Well, Cream found the groove instantly. Blast Pop and Conflicts of Heroes Videotorial Graphics Appreciation. The man famously known as Callendale, Enrico Viglino, takes a look at Marching Through Georgia, a game published in 1990 by Clash of Arm Games, designed by Gary Selkirk, and the artist is my favorite, one of my favorites, because I don't have a favorite, but yeah, he's my favorite, Rick Barber. Kyle Seeley is wrapping up Pax Britannic, an old Victory Games game, and I actually had the chance to, to argue, but when I say argue, I'm not talking about screaming argue but argue with Kyle and it was fantastic and it was about it was about about uh, Hex Encounter and War Games vis-a-vis -vis, uh, I don't know Airy Impulse uh, this that whatever and uh, man I love having a great discussion and I call it an argument because it's a back and forth but don't under don't misunderstand argument it was a great discussion great argument that's what I call it it's an argument why you can't argue happy I argue happy I'm happy now and I'm arguing Great, Kyle. Mo of Mo's Game Table is taking a look at Rogue State from Mike Molino, published by Tiny Battle Publishing. Mo also takes a look at The Lost Valley, a game by Jacques Rabier. It's The Siege of Dien Bien Phu, published by White Dog Games. Rough Swordsman Wargamer, in his Play It Safe segment, he plays the print and play solitaire game by Emmanuel Arquin which is also published by WordForge Games, Airborne In My Pocket, a great, fun solo game. 
I discovered a new channel, and it's called The History Underground. And on this episode, he's a World War II tour. That's what he does. He tours World War II sites, this time St. Vit, and it's uncut. And I just think it's, it's, it's awesome. And he has a guide there, an older gentleman, explaining what happened around the town, the disasters, the, the happy times at St. Vith. Jeff McAleer of the Gaming Gang in his tabletop gaming news on the Daily Dope number 489 for May 20th takes a look at Flashpoint South China Seas, a game published by GMT and designed by Harold Buchanan. Something really weird happened a few days ago. I got a phone call, and it's Harold Buchanan. Wow, Harold Buchanan. I'm freaked, you know. Hey, Harold, how are you? He says, you're Dan Pincaldi? Oh, yeah. Hey, you called my house. It's me. And then he, he lost it. He loses it. Well, I was so happy that it was Harold Buchanan. I pressed record so, you know, I can keep that conversation for posterity. This is how it went. Hello? Hello, is this Dan Pancaldi? Yes, it is. This is the No Enemies Here, Dan Pancaldi? Uh, yes, sir. Well, this is Harold Buchanan. Harold? Wow! What an honor! Dan Pancaldi? Are you wearing that stupid beep in Michigan t shirt? What? Yeah! You take that beef in Michigan t-shirt off or I'll break your beef and head. Harold, it's just a Michigan t-shirt. You don't know nothing. You shut up. You speak only when you're spoken to. You hear me? I know people. I got friends in the Pentagon and I got friends in the CIA. I can either bomb you or I can snipe you. So you take that beef t-shirt off before I come back there and rip that beef t-shirt off your body. Uh, oh God. Okay, okay, Harold. I'll be sending you some big t-shirts, and that's what you're gonna wear! Uh, oh, okay. Okay! Kiss my Beep. ass! Beep! Uh, uh, hello? Harold? Harold? Well, I guess that's that, then. Uwe Eichert had the attention of the whole world yesterday when we interviewed him, Rob, Orn, and myself on War and Pieces. We had Uwe discussing his academy games, well, structure games, designers and all that, a very fun interview. And the Hugh Hefner of Wargaming, Tad, the itinerant hobbyist, is doing il dolce far niente. And Ben Harsh of Harsh Rules is taking a look at Plastic Soldier Company's PSCs, The Great War, The Great War, The French Expansion, and The Great War, The Tank Expansion. Yo, and JK Wargames has a video out on Sniper Kill Confirmed, a game he's presently working on. Also, JK has another video of Normandy, The Beginning of the End. The OG, the original Grognar takes another look at Carrier Battles. Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to the Centurions Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. We're not doing a review on our website this week. However, on YouTube, we got quite a bit going on. First thing uh, we've done is we have a playthrough of Operation Cerberus. It's a little postcard game that uh, was given for free with Against the Odds magazine, or if you ordered any game from Turning Point Simulation. Watch the video. It's kind of a neat little po postcard game. And the first game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Korean War Counterattack, a Panzer Grenadier game by Jay Townsend. The publisher is Avalanche Press. Looks like uh, quite a game, and it has like, I don't know, it was either 50 or 63 scenarios. So, I mean, you could play this game for an entire year if you wanted to. 
Next game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Alpha Omega, a game of tactical combat in space from Battleline Games. This looks really promising. I just went through the rule book and looked at the components and stuff. Components are not bad for 1977. Nice thick counters and stuff. Obviously the artwork's not as sophisticated as it is nowadays, but th this looks really good and it's got, I think, 20 scenarios too, so it'll keep you busy and have a, quite a bit of replayability. Last game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Descent Journeys in the Dark, a board game of dungeon delving adventure. So it has quite good components. It's got miniatures in it. Miniatures obviously aren't as good a quality as like uh, Reaper miniatures or, or Games Workshop miniatures, but they're quite good for ones that are included in a board game. And the rest of the components look good and it's got quite a few scenarios. It looks like it'll be a fun game to play. And there, this is the best insert I've ever seen in a game in my entire life. I don't know if this insert is included with this. I got this used, but a uh, very well organized insert. I assume it's aftermarket, but take a look at the video and check it out for yourself. Hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Have a good evening.
is unbagging first team Vietnam, the air cavalry in action, designed by Mike Jocelyn. He's taking this from the Wargamer number 56 when it was priced at $9.96. And Combat was another guy I was arguing with, but this time just, well, text obviously with Kyle was uh, text also. And it was great. I, I love to have people who have different points of view than I have and that makes sense and we discuss at a you know at, at a bar level you're having a drink so you're you're a little bit more animated but it's great I remember having intellectual conversations in music with my teachers and they, they were lasting memories because I learned so much from their experience you're an idiot! What's the matter with you? Why did you practice? These are the mallets you have to use. Next time you don't use this, I'll smash your face! And, uh... I think it's great, man! Nice combat! And combat is unboxing Tank Commander, the Eastern Front, the tank trading cards game. A game designed by John Desch and published by Moments in History. He's also unboxing Slasher Flick. The Fantasy Gamer issue, number one, by Steve Jackson Games. Man, he's pulling a Centurion's review. And Professor Ricardo Mazzini is doing his Capolavoro on vlog 46, 45, and 44 on Decision Games' Lawrence of Arabia, The Arab Revolt, 1917 to 1918. And Ricardo's this kind of a teacher, you know? Great teacher. Why? Because he's softly spoken. So when he speaks, they don't they get closer to him. It's like, what you say? So you're, you're listening. And then he backs off and he, you know, para, 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 para. And talking about Capolavoro, masterpiece, la pièce de résistance. Stephen Dolges continues his World in Flames, War in Europe, Case Yellow, Part 5. And the dulcet PBS Vermont tones of the Oaken Knight. And now for something completely different. Albuera 1811. Print and play suggestions and game review. Urmge 1986 is back after one year hiatus. And he's back with Absolute Victory World Conflict 1939 to 1945. A game designed by Wes Ernie and Ben Madsen. Published by Kabuski. Flying Pig Games and reprint of Old School Tactical Volume 2 and Airborne. Yep, it's being reprinted. Get it while you can. Get it while you can. It's massive, great, awesome production. Plus, you know those commercials late at night when you can't go to sleep? Not commercials, but those infomercials where they say, you know, if you buy 17 of these knives, we'll send you another 300. It's like I can't believe people fall for that. But if you buy that, this is the add-on. Phantom Division. Awesome. Awesome. That's what I like about our things. For Sage Games and Age of Dogfights, World War I. This is a game by Predrag Lazovich and Dragan Lazovich. This is a father and son team. This will be going on kickstarter that is check it out easy and deep game and mauro faina in episode 107 has a podcast called how to play in Italian would be come giocare, and it's Unconditional Surrender by Sal Vasta. The Mary and Tom Show, episode 103, where they talk about factual statements, wood bits update, dino table battle update, also priority number one, dinosaurs, 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 and also insulting their customers. And now to be done with the previous podcast, the Mary and Tom Show, episode 104, where they talk about Indianapolis, the wrong Tucky, Kentucky, you're okay, the vote, working with artists, Tom is not a map artist, 
and reign of witches. Yes. Could you believe it? There's an event planned. Compass Expo 2020, November 5th to 9th, 2020, at Comfort Inn and Suite in Meriden, Connecticut, where you'll have monster games on opening gaming. Oh, sorry, monster games and opening gaming, designer hosted playtest sessions, game demonstration, Euro games, tournament play, seminars, buffet breakfast, Compass Games exhibitor hours for on site sales, special attendee discounts, free parking, and just a heck of a good time. It's great to have an expo or a con back. Another week, another show. This was a tired. I'm tired. But great, I feel great. And your support has enabled me to save that money and buy myself a 4K camera so I can upgrade the quality of, of the videos. And um, I, I'm just waiting for the mic. Stuka Joe was kind enough to donate some um, wireless mic. The, the guy's amazing. And... Uh, First, I gotta learn how to use this thing. This is my little light, and um, I, I'm just I'm, I'm terribly excited, and, and I'm I'm in, eternally grateful to my supporters, and this is just to make the show better. So, your support is going for something concrete for the show. Again, thank you very much, and please, if you can, please support this channel. It just makes the channel better. Hopefully, I'm going to know how to use it. Just give me a little time. And please subscribe. And like the channel. That one person always gives me thumbs down. I know who you are. Stop being in Ugats. Eh? <laughs> Why do you have to give me one thumb down? Eh? I don't know. Sandissima. Anyways, thank you. Thank you for your support. It, it's amazing. And I'll see you next week. Keeps me going, this. Blast Pop and Conflicts of Hero Blast Pop and Conflicts of Heroes vi vidi Blast Pop and Conflicts of Hero Jesus Christ Blast